Hey, Kelly. Hey, Art. Thanks for having me here. You know what I'm here for, right? You're here because you think you've got a pretty solid planner and you can beat what we've got. Yes, we're here for a classic side-by-side -side trial, also called Mano y Mano. Mano y Mano. <laughs> so we have some features that no other planter has, including yours, and that's the idea, right? For the last three years, we've been doing this. We go to farms, we talk with farmers or research entities, seed companies, and we do this side-by-side -side trials. And for the last three years, our track record is pretty good. We're pretty proud of what we've got, but let's see what you've got to offer. So Kelly, the first thing we're gonna talk about is the wheels, right? Most planters in the market, all the planters in the market, they have tires next to each other. And we're leaving eight, sometimes 10 tire tracks and pinch rows. How many pinch rows does your planter has? Two. Two pinch rows, eight tire tracks every pass. With momentum, the tires are in front of each other. It's the inline tandems, right? Absolutely. What we have with this, no pinch rows. Regardless how many acres you plant, you hit leave no pinch rows. And that's a big thing, right? The second thing that we offer and we can see here is that the, the tires, they don't have a normal spindle. That's not a normal spindle. That's a smart spindle. We okay. are literally measuring the weight of the planter every split second in the center and in the wings. So. Your planter may not have, because I was looking, right, a weight transfer, but you know, most planters have the weight transfer. Right. Right, is, is this cylinder here? That's that right. Transfer the weight mm -hmm. for the wing, but who tells the system to transfer? Uh, you have to do it manually from the cab, I believe. You have to do it manually. There are ways to calculate and estimate, but as you're driving, as you're going in the field, and I see some pretty uh, incredible topography here, <laughs> some rolling terrains here. We're feels, known for that. Feels almost like Kentucky sometimes, but it is a lot of rolling terrain. And every, every time you move, the topography changes and mm -hmm. your weight is shifting. Mm -hmm. So if you set the weight transfer once and you don't adjust, you're either transferring too much or not enough. To do it correctly, you know, the ground is infinitely variable. So the system should be automatic to match the infinitely variable ground. It should be always adjusting. So Absolutely. you get inside momentum, you press the balance mode every split second. Since we're measuring the weight, the cylinders will push and pull and they won't stop until the entire toolbar is measuring the same. So you're suggesting that your weight transfer system is a lot like the Delta Force system that you've got on the units. It's a infinitely variable weight transfer system. It's got load pins or some technology like that to balance the bar the same way we're balancing the unit. It's what we call a closed loop. You adjust, you push, you pull, you measure, and you self, uh, you feed that information back in. And that's what low logic is doing. And the weight that we are measuring on the planter is not just feeding the weight transfer, it's feeding the tire inflation system. So as we are planting in the field, tire inflation system go all the way down to 15 PSI. And it's stretching, elongating that footprint. When we have a bigger footprint on the ground, what happens? Less compaction. Less compaction, more traction. So when you are finishing with the field and you fold the planter, we know you're folding, you're gonna road. Well, we inflate the tires all the way up to 45 PSI and you can transport between one field to the other as fast as your track. And it can automatically fold. does that? Automatically. Automatically and reinflates the tires. Automatically adjust in the field, automatically adjust as you are folding or okay. unfolding the planter. So um, all these compaction management features really allow us to use this big tanks, right? I yeah. talk with farmers and some farmers would say, Arthur, I don't even feel my tank full now with 600 gallons. Why would I put a thousand gallons? Because we can. All these trials that we've been doing, most of the times we are running up against a planter with 600 gallons, 520. And even with the thousand gallons of liquid fertilizer, we're still outperforming them. You say that farmers don't want to put a thousand gallon in. I would love to put a thousand gallon in. You're gonna, we're gonna have about a three gallon rate. We're gonna go plant 300 acres a day and we're gonna fill that once per day. That's very efficient. I do like that. If you like capacity, we have one card in the sleeve, which we call the, the side tanks. So if I've had farmers that say, Arthur, a thousand is awesome, but I want more. So we offer two saddle tanks with 250 on the side. So you could do a dual liquid and having the 500 gallons side tanks. And they go right here. Right outside the, the CFS, uh, applying in furrow with a lower rate, and you have the 1,000 gallons 
doing your offset with a higher rate. Here's the number one priority for me. Because of our topography that you've already talked about, the big hills we've got, the possible chance for erosion, we're 100% no-till, even corn on corn no-till. We have cover crops everywhere, like you can see in this field. We try to have 100% cover crops in this northern latitude, sometimes that's tough. You're living in Minnesota, you know what that's like being in the north. Our planner is customized to handle these extreme conditions, and we, we get even emergence, we get proper planning depth. Things I'm very proud of are what we're accomplishing. So I want to know, can your planner handle that? Absolutely. A lot of the trials we're doing, we have an agronomist with us. So we're doing trials with no-till, conventional till, minimal till, and we are big supporters of cover crop. So if I had to say, if I had to put a number, I would say that 40% of the momentum planters out in the field, and we are in our third season in customers' hands, they are running in similar conditions. We have rolling terrains, we have no-till, and we have a lot of cover crop. So as we shift to talk about our toolbar, right, and you said something that it was like perfect, the perfect cue, consistent planning depth. As we are talking about consistent planning depth, we'll get to talk about the toolbar. So let's just go to the side and let me show you. All right. So every planter in the market bolts their row units to the toolbar yeah, or to the do. chassis, yep. right? It's a dead chassis that if your wheels are at the, at the bottom of a ditch, you may be burying your seat. Mm -hmm. If your wheels are at the top of a terrace, mm -hmm. you may lose ground engagement. Believe me, I've experienced that in my 26 years. Yes. Yeah, and I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm counting on that because this, the idea is to come up with a solution. So this seven by seven frame here, this is completely detached from the wheels. You can have the uh, deepest ditch, we raise the fluctuating toolbar and you can keep that consistent planting depth. You can have this at the top of a terrace and this is why a lot of momentums are shining in the Dakotas and, and uh, Kansas where it's terrace country is because this fluctuating toolbar will copy the topography of the terrain regardless of where the, where the wheels are. And we're talking about three independent toolbars, wing, center, and wing. So you've got three 20-foot toolbars. Correct. Three independent 20-foot toolbars. And then this is the weight transfer system or the leveling system. I mean, I don't know for sure what do you call this, but this is also automatic, like the weight transfer system and the Delta Force? Like almost everything with the planter, it's automatic and self-adjusting. So we have throughout the wing three potentiometers that will read the height of the row unit. So we get the lowest row unit, we get the highest one, we'll place the toolbar right in the middle automatically. And then with the travel you've got from your parallel arms, if it's in the middle, everything should be appropriate. Exactly. There's enough travel in the row unit to make everything fine. We go eight inches up and eight inches down. It may not be a lot more, but that's two inches more than every other plant. It's more, yes. I've noticed your parallel arms are longer. I've seen this at trade shows before. There's a lot more travel here than there are other planters. I would admit that right away. And that's the plan, right? If we have vertical travel range, we can help the farmers maintain consistent depth. And you said that, and then the ultimate goal, even emergence. So Arthur, anytime you ask a person to change colors, it feels like a bit of an uncomfortable risk to go from the style of planter that I've known my whole life to something that we don't have any experience with so that makes me uncomfortable. We know what we are asking. We're talking with farmers that have been 10, 20 years, the, the father, the grandfather, the great grandfather with the same brand. So we know that this, it, it's, it's a leap of faith sometimes. So what we offer is Gold Star. Every fan piece of equipment comes with Gold Star, which is a three years complete factory warranty. That's not an extended warranty. It's absolutely bumper to bumper everything is covered. So for three years, there's absolutely no headache, no stress, and you won't touch your pocket. And tractors and combines, we have the loaner guarantee. If we can fix your product in one or two days, we guarantee another equipment to keep you running. On a planter, since it's so customizable, right, we can't just replace, so we have the parts assurance program. Dealers are carrying much more components that they've ever had because they know that if in two years they haven't used some parts, they just send it back to us. The whole idea is to keep the dealer with extra parts so your planter keeps running. So that's the purpose of Gold Star, to take from the farmer that risk that you mentioned. And it increases the resale value later. Well, so uh, 
I'm anxious for the uh, results of our mano y mano. How about we spice things up a little bit? Make it easy on yourself. Uh, so uh, let's see, if I win, you will gift me a pack of German beer. And if your planter wins, I will get you a pack of bush light. How about that? <laughs> How about a bottle of bourbon? Perfect, a bottle of bourbon. Sounds like a deal. You got a bet. Perfect, let's wait for harvest. <laughs> 